Um, hi, everyone. I'm Mark Harrison. I'm a landscape architect and I work as the parks planning manager. And uh, well, I used to be a neighbor. Um, I used to be when I moved here 10 years ago, we rented a place up at the end of um, on Deborah Lawn at, at the end of uh, what's the name of that street? In any event, we lived there a couple of years right near the park. And now we live over near uh, my wife and I live over near Haworth Park. But in any event, I'm very familiar with the neighborhood uh, <clears throat> and the parks, of course, because it's my job. What I'd like to do is to uh, we'd like to present a little bit about the history, which isn't a lot, but we'd like to present everything that we know. Talk a little bit about the project, about what's existing, what is um, what we believe to be something that is given and not and things that are not given in terms of what activities we would like to see the part in the park as we talk about renovating it. And uh, and then we'd like to hear everything you have to say about it. We don't have a plan in mind. I, I do. We did a conceptual sketch just showing a couple things, as I mentioned, that we think would probably be a go. And so we'll talk about those and other things. And then after that, we get your feedback in conversation. We'll talk about um, what what we're going to do next. Do you have any questions before we get started? Anyone? <clears throat> you doke. Trying to figure out how to forward. Oh, it worked. Um, Edgewater Park, as you know, the location is at Shore, Shore Avenue and Muckleteal Boulevard. This is an aerial photo and it shows all the existing things in the park. And we'll go get into those a little bit uh, in a minute as we do a site analysis uh, for the park. The history of the park is such that in 1930s there was a proposed auto um, uh, demolition, I guess you'd call it, a uh, auto wrecking yard proposed for this site. It's about an acre, um, including the tennis court and westward. And uh, a couple of the neighbors purchased the property and donated it to the city for a park. And so they originally had a uh, like a track around the perimeter of this for running, and they had a field house of some sort. I've never seen pictures of it, but it's gone. And uh, it was right at the location of the tennis courts. Um, and in the 1990s, the playground was renovated, and now it's time to do the same. Um, here's a picture of the playground back in the day with no safety surfacing or, or anything at the playground. Everything's changed quite a bit. The rules have changed quite a bit since then. This is a schedule of the project. Uh, if you look at the number three here, it says west section of the park closed for a new bridge and and for the duration of the bridge construction. That's what um, uh, is going to begin in the spring of 2022 and be completed in the summer of 2023. As you know, the bridge will be closed and it'll be a big pain in the patootie for everyone. But what we intend to do is to um, keep part of the park open during that bridge construction, but primarily the tennis courts or the multi-purpose courts. The rest of the park will be used for lay down for the bridge construction. And then they're going to give us some things in in uh, uh, in exchange for that. But I'll get to that in a minute. In any event, right now we're in uh, fall and it's public outreach time. Conceptual design presentation at the Parks Board is scheduled for December 7th. Um, we talked about the construction of the bridge during that construction of the bridge, we'll be preparing construction documents for the park redesign. And uh, that should, whole thing should be done by spring of 2024. This is a uh, existing conditions, including the uh, Muckleteal Bridge, number one. Number two is entrance signage, and it's shown right here. Uh, there's a chain link fence at the corner of the park with a uh, couple of signs, well, one welcome to the neighborhood sign. There's another sign at the, uh, just by the parking area, east of it, which is the park entry sign. And we hope to consolidate those on that corner in some fashion. Parking is there now and uh, right, we can discuss parking. Right now it's uh, slated to remain in the same location according to the, the plans as uh, set forth by the 
city in renovating the bridge and they're going to ruin everything and then put the parking back the way it is. Right now there's an open lawn area with irrigation. Uh, there's a playground, number five. And uh, the existing arbor uh, is right next to the tennis courts. We did apply for a grant last year to renovate the tennis court surfacing. And so what we're going to do, because it's in need of repair, what we'd like to do is to move that over to where number nine is, the, the uh, property that we purchased in 2008 or 2009, in order to give us, uh, we, we purchased the property to expand the park and we'd like to keep the tennis courts over there because it tends to separate the uses in the park um, because that's such a large activity. Um, tennis courts and the property addition in, from 2009 or eight was right here, number nine. Any questions on the existing stuff there? Um, this is a site analysis. It's just a brief site analysis that we did uh, to help us help guide our decisions about what to do with the park. Uh, right now, the um, the park addition is shown in orange. The existing structure is that pergola that's existing there next to the tennis courts, and we expect that to remain unless there's reasons for not including it, keeping it. Um, the gateway entrance that I discussed, existing parking that will probably remain in that location unless we decide not to. Some kind of a screen we believe is necessary between the park and Muckleteal Boulevard. Um, you could put a vegetation screen in there, but it, it really doesn't keep the sound down, but at least psychologically it helps to make you feel like you're in a, a park as opposed to something alongside of a road. So we hope to do that. And <clears throat> from the SEPTED or uh, environmental design standpoint, crime prevention through environmental design or SEPTED, we'd like to have the neighbors be able to view into the park uh, intermittently, only from their ho homes. But if we do some screening, we'd like to do that in between those views. So it'll look like it's a, a enclosed a park with with lots of trees, but it will uh, certainly be visible from all the neighbors. And uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Some kind of a circulation throughout the park. Right now there's circulation. Uh, it's on a kind of a little, I don't know if it's gravel road, but then it goes outside the fence, along Shore Avenue, and then it comes along here. And there really isn't a walk around Muckle Teal Boulevard, but we'd like to somehow connect this for a full circuit. That's one thing we have as a goal. This is the uh, Soundview Deli and uh, Grocery right here. And they're an important part of this because they're right adjacent to this, uh, the park, and also the proposed new tennis courts. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? I'm gonna show you some examples of some site amenities, and most of them are playgrounds, but it gives you an idea of what we can do that isn't just pick uh, playground equipment out of a catalog, but we may want to do that just the same. But just to give you a feel for how you can make these things thematic, if you'd like, here's a theme showing. Looks like reeds in a in a, in in the sea with some uh, fish, but it's actually a piece of playground equipment. Uh, here's some uh, example of some walking paths that have some uh, nodes along the way where people can do specific exercises. Uh, there may be three or four or five of them around there. That seems to be kind of a thing that people enjoy doing in addition to just walking or jogging. On the right here is a exercise station, but it's uh, lots of different types of activities as opposed to one. We have to be careful not to put these too close to the playground because sometimes the kids get on there and they're not made for kids to play on. And so we have to be uh, a little bit judicial about how that works. But you can see how there's a lot of people that can get exercise on this piece of equipment as well. Sometimes the play equipment can just be a slide, but there's surrounding activities. In this case, climbing. Climbing is very important for the young kids. Um, and they can climb up this pseudo climbing wall or just these uh, topographic changes. Some other activities may be incorporated into the park in this case we show a couple of bocce courts on the right the one is um, you know incorporated into the park in a uh, integral way with paving etc 
And the one on the left is uh, a little bit more simple. If we should decide to do bocce or volleyball or skeet shooting, it's not, that's really not a possibility, but you get what I'm saying. Another example of a climbing wall. This is a sphere that is internally um, equipped with the net and it's uh, I used to uh, climb a lot of trees as a kid and I love this. I just think kids need to climb, you know. Uh, it's it's good for their brain and their social skills as well. And a playground uh, doesn't necessarily have to be posts and platforms. It can be something like this if we should decide that that's what you'd like. And uh, intriguing, exciting, fun. It can uh, the playground equipment just that doesn't necessarily just have to be slide down and go back up. This is a huge um, uh, pattern uh, facility that you can crawl through and. And you know it's uh, it's very space saving as well. Thematically, sometimes the playgrounds can become a boat, and you can see someone's getting swallowed by the whale. Multi people's multi person slides are exciting for kids too, and we use a rubberized surfacing here as a uh, as a play component, play element itself, because the little toddlers just really like to just kind of try their wings at crawling up and down these things try their wings, try their legs. And sometimes it's a very simple matter of just keeping an open field. Right now we have open grass like is seen on the left and people go there and they hang out there and have picnics and it's not huge like this, but it is. it does allow us a little uh, of a pastoral area that we can just uh, is non-programmed so that we can do whatever we want there. You can play little pickup games of soccer or whatever. Sometimes the space uh, in rather than having a, one large open space or one big centrally focused space, sometimes uh, we can create little pockets where people can meet with each other individually and there can be a little bit more of a pedestrian scale to it so that people feel a lot more comfortable there um, having social exchanges. The Landscaping, uh, we will have to provide some landscape screening, uh, as I mentioned, around the perimeter per code, but also um, they can be plant, they can be trees, they can be shrubs and some perennials, or they can just be the grass itself. On the right, we show some landforms that act as uh, uh, space dividers, but also as uh, play elements themselves. Oops. Sometimes they don't need to even be a manufacturer's uh, piece of equipment. Sometimes a play element like this is is very intriguing to kids, especially the little kids. They love the enclosure, the different spatial enclosures, um, and it does it doesn't have to cost that much either. This is what I've been calling a conceptual layout of the things that we would like to see stay or discuss with you. Right now, number seven here is the uh, location. Uh, at which we're proposing, uh, instead of renovating the existing playground, which is here, surfacing, we'd like to set that over here to get it away from the, the main portion of the park to have this as one big open space. Um, we've already applied for and received a grant to do this work here, and that would be done, we're hoping that would be done before um, long. I'm not sure, I can't say exactly when, but let's just say this will be done prior to the renovation of the rest of the park. And it, it's our hope that this could remain open for use while the rest of the park is, is being renovated. The playground itself, uh, here's the arbor, the existing arbor. We're suggesting that one alternative might be to utilize that paved area that now that's a tennis court for a playground surface. That's a possibility. It may save us some money in the long run. Uh, and a perimeter path of some sort to go all the way around ar around the uh, the park. And that's about it for uh, what we're proposing. Um, we're going to talk to you about what, what you'd like to see in the park and take that to heart. And what we'd like to do is to keep you informed. There's a website we can you can go to look at. What we'd like to do is take your input, put together another conceptual plan posted on the website at, along with reasons why we did or didn't consider some public comments. And then uh, we'd like to hear your feedback at that point as well. On December 7th, we plan on taking the plan to the park board for their approval. 
And my name is Mark Harrison. As I mentioned, here's my uh, email address. You can certainly just email me anytime you want. Uh, Corey Rettenmeyer is who spoke first here uh, is going to uh, he's a public outreach coordinator. And uh, if you want information on how the bridge is coming along and when when it's supposed to be done, etc. There's a link here for the bridge info. And that's it. Now we'd like to see what you have to say about things and what your concerns might be or what your wishes are. And please feel free to speak up anyone. <clears throat> um, um, I, I, I have a I question have for you, Mark. Mark. You, you talk, talk about, about number, number seven, seven, the multi-sport multi court. court. Uh -huh. Can you explain, you explain that, that a little that further, little what your vision is for the uses, uses of that of court? That Oh, thank you very much. Um, that we, we would anticipate that that would be an, a tennis court to replace the one that's there. But in addition to that, facing sideways are two pickleball courts. It would be two pickleball courts and two half court basketball hoops on that all on that same surface. Um, I just want to add, um, I am a pickleball player. I'm so thrilled that you're thinking multi-use down there. Um, the courts at Legion, which actually I was just at today, could actually, each side of that tennis net can accommodate two pickleball courts. So if you make your tennis, your multi-purpose area large enough, you actually can fit in four pickleball courts, which would be lovely because, um, you know, it's it's the fastest growing sport there is in the United States today. So I, I know when I went down to Edgewater and I looked at their current size, I don't think it could accommodate that. I'm not sure, but I do know at Legion it, it could do that if it were the same size area as the Legion courts. Okay, thank you. We'll look into that. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? Uh, I was, uh, hi Mark, my name is Mary. Hi. hi Mary. And I'm a resident of the city of Everett and I also play pickleball. And I, I was wondering um, if there's any plans for lights there so we can play. There's no place in the city that has lights to play pickleball at night on a, um, that right now it's, I mean, it's gonna start to get dark about four o'clock and there won't be any place to play pickleball. Okay. So lighting would be fabulous. I will put that on our list of fun things to do and discuss it amongst ourselves. And I know there's a lot of residual light from the neighborhood and the, the street lights, but I don't know exactly how much and what that yeah. how that affects the play. Do you do you know how that uh, would affect the play out there? And have you tried to play tennis out there in the evening now without lights? No, I played we played out there um, when there were pickleball lines on it. We played, but it was during the day. OK. Um, and so I think you it, it'd be kind of like a baseball field where you actually would have to have lights directed mm -hmm. at the court so you could see the ball. Sure. I don't think you'd have to have a lot of lights. Um, but uh, last night um, we have a, a Wednesday in the park at Legion Park. I mean, cool. at, at Forest Park on Wednesday nights, we've been having that. And uh, we had 29 people up there last night, but like I said, it's going to start to get dark. They've been playing till about 5.30 or 6, which is almost too dark. Yeah. And so um, it'd be, it would just be really nice to have a place to go that would okay. have lights. Okay. Duly noted. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, used to work, I used go to ahead. work at a school that had uh, tennis courts, and we had lights on those courts. Um, and one of the things that we found is because you have neighbors that are right next to the park, you could put the lights on a timer so that, say, at eight o'clock, um, they won't, they can't come on until you know the next morning or whatever. That might help. Ease. We have some control over that, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Another thing about having pickleball players out playing like that is in the schools when we're there, we have a school in Marysville where we can play. The vandalism is, um, they find that there's not as much vandalism because there's people a lot, because there's people there. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's one of the best deterrents from vandalism, in fact. Right. Yeah. 
All right. Any other kind of activities that you may have in mind or would like us to research and investigate? Hello? Oh, looks like we have a comment here. Okay, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? I can. Oh, okay. Um, I'm a, a tennis player too, but I, I would, I'm interested in um, two things. Um, what, do you have any plans on the, the parking area? Uh, I noticed when they revamped that parking area a couple of years ago, there's actually fewer parking places there now than there were. And if I wonder if there's any provision for a larger parking area, especially if there are going to be um, added pickleball courts and uh, a larger park area in general. Um, right now, quite often, uh, there is no parking available at the park there. And there's no parking on Shark, uh, Shore Avenue alongside the park allowed. And uh, I'm just wondering if there's any possibility of increasing avail available parking. And the other question that I have, which is faded, I'm sure for, you know, it, it's, it's uh, there is currently a little picnic area and a barbecue pit there. And uh, I've talked to several people who, who brought their children there and had a barbecue and, and that sort of thing. And inevitably, the children have to use the bathroom and there is no bathroom available in the park. Is it at all possible in the future to have some sort of a bathroom type facility installed? I know the parks in general are going away from bathrooms due to abuse from other uh, sources, but uh, I just wonder if that's at all a possibility. It is kind of a, a difficult thing for families that have, I don't have any children anymore, but for families that do have children in picnics and stuff and if you're playing them well, or even players if you have like 29 sure. pickleball players like she had mentioned uh at one time a bathroom is a a good thing i don't know if there's any sewer traces in any in that lot or in any in the park or anything but uh well there's a sewer that goes from the soundview deli uh -huh. right here along this road to shore and that's where it connects i spoke to the uh, Alex Kim, the owner of the deli, who doesn't speak English uh, very much, but uh, he said, and I, I said, what is, uh, would you like to see? Your people buy food and things and go to the park a lot. And the, the one thing that he said was bathrooms. He said, everyone comes in and wants to use their bathrooms and he can't right. let them because the pipes are old and et cetera, et cetera. But bathrooms are like $750,000 right now is what they're costing. And that's a lot of money. Porta potties is an, is is a possibility, but what he said was there's nowhere to, to go to the bathroom between Old Town and Harborview Park, that's which correct. is a long long way even on a bike. So that's something we can discuss. This particular park is of the size, uh, is of such a size that it really lends itself to a neighborhood walk to park, and that's kind of how it's classified. Right. This is for the neighbors and people that live close. There is parking there, uh, probably because people see it going by, you know, people from Boeing and all the different areas around here. And they want to go there and have lunch. I see a lot of people parking there at lunch, but I also see a lot of people either driving or walking to the park with their kids. Um, so sometimes they don't want to cross the boulevard with their kids, and I can understand that. So I think parking is going to stay. But uh, I don't. Not, I'm not so sure about restrooms. We will discuss it at length, however, and to see if there's anything we can do. But I, I, I can say right now that it's not probable. Yeah. And parking, you're going to stay with the number of spaces, and there's a rather large, larger pedestrian area. I mean, they actually lost parking spaces in that same space there. There are fewer now than there were before that was revamped. Uh, and if you have four four pickleball courts at a, and you're talking maybe even more, and a tennis court, it's very easy to to. Um, yeah, I understand. It's not enough park. spaces up, but there's nowhere to park on shore either, is there? No, there's not. It's not. It's illegal to park on shore. Well, you can park in, across the road in front of people. Where? No, you cannot. There's signs saying you cannot. Not on the right side. Hmm. Anyway. Thank you. Well, we'll look into that, whether there's parking or not, and what, what that what that presents itself as.
OK, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, anyone else have comments, concerns? You can always uh, email us or um, yeah, I guess email me and, and uh, let me know if you have any thoughts afterwards. We'd be, love to have your comments. Do we I have just, some more comments? I just want to piggyback uh, on what Jim said in that um, the parking, because I think are there three or four spots right now? And I, when I've been there at that park, I've had to park across the street where that little business was closed down. I oh, yeah. Park, park there and then run across the boulevard. And the boulevard, I believe, at that point has no sidewalks. So to consider it a walking park, yeah, maybe for sure people, but not anybody on the other side of, of you know, Mukilteo, there isn't, there isn't a, it's not like a sidewalk neighborhood that it's okay. in. So I do think parking is critical as well. I just want to applaud you for the your comments on climbing structures. So I used to teach PE for 17 years and I totally agree with you. Climbing, it's not only physically good for kids, but it is developed their brain and they have shown studies that it tends to help their reading skills and math. I mean, there's an overall connection somehow to climbing and development. And so I would really encourage you when you think of which play structures you're going to have, to have that climbing component in there. Okay. Looks like Austin um, has his hand up or did. Austin, did you have a comment? Yeah, thanks, Corey. Uh, Mark, uh, I'm super excited about this. Um, so thank you and, and Corey and everybody else for being involved. Um, I'm a big tennis player. Um, I would echo the request for lights. Um, potentially also a covering. Um, I, it, it obviously rains a lot around here, um, and maybe those two things work well together, uh, especially in the winter. It's nice to be able to have a place to uh, kind of run around, and there's not a whole lot of indoor tennis options uh, in our area. Um, I like the idea of the separate sport courts for pickleball and basketball and tennis. Um, I've been to a lot of other surrounding areas where they try and combine it all on one surface. Um, I think that that tends to be somewhat confusing and then um, only one group can play at a time on in the given space. So I, I like the idea of the separate pickleball courts personally, um, but the light and covering would be would be awesome. OK, thank you. OK. What else? Anyone have any other fun ideas? Carousel, uh, rocket ship? Anything? OK, um, I, I have one one comment about um, porta potties. Yes, um, we we play at a middle school up in Marysville uh, pretty often. And during the summer season, we have a porta potty that our club puts in there, uh, rents and puts in there with approval from the school. But then it gets taken away once this sort of season, the, the main activity season is over. So you could maybe uh, think of it that way, put it in and if, it's, if there's trouble, you can pull it out. Um, but if there isn't trouble, it'd be really nice to have a, even a porta potty uh, just for say four months a year, five months a year um, at, at least. And if it works out, then you could just leave it there and you know, you'd have to have it cleaned every week or whatever, but just okay. a thought. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right then. Corey, do you want to have, have any more? Do you have any more words of wisdom before we? <clears throat> uh, no, just uh, please feel free to reach out uh, directly to us if you have any other questions or if you think of something that you'd like to, you know, you didn't think of tonight that uh, you'd like to make sure we uh, we have in preparation for the plan as we move forward. Um, but appreciate everybody coming and uh, joining, giving your input. I think JJ has his hand up. Yeah, looks like you're, it. You're muted, Jim.
You're muted. I don't think Jim ever took his hand down. I, I was thinking that too, possibly. Yeah. Okie doke. Okay. <laughs> I'm right. sorry. I, I didn't know. I, I didn't know I had to take my hand down after. <laughs> <laughs> didn't it but start I, to hurt after a while? I, I would say. I wonder if it's possible if uh, you could get um, local support for porta potties, like raising funds from a club or a bunch of tennis players or something, and to lower the cost. Because I'm certain the people I play tennis with would certainly be happy to. Uh, contribute to that, at least for the, the good weather season. I would personally for the, the whole year, but it, uh, you know, if, if that's an option, I don't know how that would work. That's probably not, uh, that's out of your bailiwick, but. Uh, well, we're gonna discuss it at length because it's a kind of a unique s situation in this park because it is a neighborhood park, but like you said, only the Shore Avenue people can get there without crossing a major thoroughfare. Right. And I, uh, I know the Kims and that I know that's always been an issue with him as people trying to use the bathroom. And in some cases it's a desperate situation with a little. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, looks like we may have another comment. Austin, um, you have another comment? Yeah. Um, I just thought of, I've seen some parts where, uh, or some parks rather where there's a camera that there's a, a website or something so you can log in and see if there's court availability. Um, I, I live on shore. I'm on the other end of shore um, and I tend to walk down there and frequently the tennis courts are, are occupied. It'd be super cool if I could just log in somewhere and see, hey, they're, they're open right now and then head down there. Okay, good, good comment. It might also help with security and, and neighbors' peace of mind or whatnot to be able to see what's actively going on in the park. Thank you. All right. Well, if that's all the comments we have, that's great. And uh, we're going to take these ideas and run with them. And what we're going to do is to post a conceptual plan like the one that's uh, shown here on the website. And it will have to take about two weeks to do that, two or three weeks. So check back then and we'll see uh, that plan and or conceptual plan. And then we'd like to have your comments on that if we may. Does that sound good? And just one more quick comment. Um, I, I'm not sure if, if you all are um, connected with the notification platform where you can receive uh, parks and city information via email or text. You can sign up for that and then um, information as it becomes available that's posted will get sent to you. So when we have an update, it'll go out on that um, news flash. So um, you can access by uh, going to the city website um, uh, and, and signing up for that if you haven't. And it's a great tool. OK, then. Well, thank you all for participating. We really appreciate your input and um, we will keep you posted every step of the way. Thanks, everybody. Take care now. Thank you. Bye bye.